Hey, Brandon here. Welcome back to another episode of the 2023 NFL Draft Rookie Report. Um, today's show, we're going to talk about an exciting running back heading to the NFL Draft, Mr. Tank Bigsby, running back from Auburn. We're going to take a look at his 2022 film. We're going to take a look at his expected draft capital, as well as talk about his projected fantasy value. If in fact, if in fact, Jason, he declares for the draft. Tell me if you think Tank Bigsby has a chance of coming back for a fourth year or we're in the transfer portal season here, the second week of December. Does he enter the transfer portal and go somewhere? Or do you think he goes to the NFL draft? I just have a feeling like he's going to go to the NFL draft. Okay. I don't know why. It's just a gut feeling. All right, yeah. good. All right, well, that's what we're going to talk about. That's what this show is all about. Um, we've done a lot of these shows, so check out the channel. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment below. But we've done a lot of players. And our goal here, Jason mm -hmm. and I, is before the NFL draft happens next April, is to really take a look at the majority of the players that will be in your first three or four rounds of your rookie draft. So welcome to the channel. Um, are you ready to talk about some Tank Bigsby? Oh, I'm ready. Let's do all this. All right. So Tank Bigsby, okay? We all know Junior Auburn. Came out as a freshman, killed it. And, you know, I'm going to say maybe the shine has come off of him a little bit over the last mm -hmm. two years. But nonetheless, if he does go to the NFL draft, he is, from what I've seen right now, a top six, seven, eight running back headed to the draft. So he is six foot, 213 pounds. He's got the requisite size on the season. College football season is over, except for the bowl games and the championship games. He had 179 attempts, 970 yards. 10 touchdowns, averaging 4.4 yards throughout his career. He also had 30 receptions in 2022, um, so he was involved in the passing game. So we've watched the film. Jason and I were film grinders. We love watching the film. We don't just watch the highlights. We've watched three or four films extensively that I created. There are A lot of those films are on this channel, and I will be putting two of them attached to the end of this video for you to take a look. So after the show, you guys can go and take a look at the scouting films that Jason and I have looked at and tell us, you know, Leave a comment and tell us what you think, if we think we're on par with uh, what you see or if not. So, all right, let's take a look at some PFF stats. I like to do this. It's a subscription-based product, and they've really got some good and interesting information in there. So first and foremost, we kind of look at all the time, um, the zoning gap, and we were kind of talking pre-show about his usage on outside zone plays, but uh, in zone, 112 uh, runs and 60 so he's got a little bit of versatility. Looked like he played a little bit more in zone throughout the 2022 season, uh, but nice to see that versatility. His yards after contact, 4.16. He's ranked fourth. And what I did is I sorted in PFF um, running backs with 100 carries that were eligible for the 2023 draft. So uh, he came in fourth in that. So that's pretty good, right? Yeah. Uh, missed tackles forced. He had 60. That He was ranked 11th in that sorting that I did. Elusive rating, he was ranked 6th uh, at 137. That is an uh, exclusive uh, PFF rating on exclusive or elusive rating, which is kind of interesting. Um, I don't know how they come up with those numbers, but it is what it is, right? Right. But his overall run grade was 90.4. He came in eighth in the class, at least for NFL prospects heading to the draft. Uh, any of those numbers kind of, do they correlate with what you see on film? Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, I, th I think the elusive rating is kind of interesting to me. I didn't see that in the film mm -hmm. for him to be ranked so highly. So that one really stands out to me. Uh, and then the missed tackles forced. I, I remember in one of the game films that you created, the announcer was saying that he yeah. leads mm -hmm. the SEC in yards after contact. And I, I think like, number two. I think he was yeah. number two or something. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. And I was like, really? Yeah, we're going to get into it, but I didn't see that either. Yeah, I, I didn't either. So, all right. So this, this, uh, the draft scouting reports I put on my Debbie dashboard. It is a product that uh, you can kind of check out my profile video on this channel and kind of see what that is all about. But so I'm going to kind of read to you, Jason, what my scouting report is. We're going to go through five traits that I look at and I know that you look at as well when we look mm -hmm. at these running backs and vision and patience. And I'm very excited. I'm excited to hear your point of view versus mine. Okay. I have okay. here in my notes, I have, he's an average uh, vision and patience. Um, you know, I thought his vision could be better at times. He tends to rush plays. Uh, he does let his, you know, blocks develop. Um, but I want to talk about the outside lanes. We talked, we got kind of mentioned that before, you know, because I thought his, from a vision standpoint, he was running outside. We talked about the Alabama game pre show where a lot of those runs, he was running outside zone spread, you know, zone plays. And I felt from a vision standpoint, he was missing a lot of cutback lanes. He was trying to beat people on the outside. Um, I, and he seemed to run to open space versus kind of creating anything on his own. What do, what are your thoughts on that? 
Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you on these. The one thing I noticed is that when he was running to the outside, you know, his blockers didn't do that great of a job of creating gaps for him. But I saw that when he would take a gap, he would actually wait too long to execute that uphill battle and get through the gap. And I think he just was waiting way too long. By the time he got to the perimeter, I think he knew it was kind of going to be all over with. So mm-hmm. he just got what he could along the perimeter. I think his vision, I think it's okay his blockers i started watching his blockers a little bit more than him and they did not do much for him either which is probably going to correlate to the force mix tackles and we'll get into that but i do think that he's just average as far as his vision i think he's a little bit too patient behind the line i want to see a little bit more urgency with the intelligence to know when to hit the gap properly yeah, I know. Everyone, you talk about Tank Bigsby, everyone says he plays for shitty Auburn, right? And and we're like making excuses for him. I, 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 I'm agreeing with you. I think he had average vision. Um, I, I think there were some plays because when I watch these plays, I stop it a lot of times when I make mm-hmm. these these films and I and you know I can see openings that maybe he doesn't see, but like it all yeah, happens so fast. I slow fast. the film down, so that's what you got to do. Yeah, it's what you, you got to yeah. do. All right, let's talk about footwork and lateral ability. Here are my notes in my scatter report. You know, he has the ability to drop his weight and contort his body through gaps however his game is to use his strength to create yards i don't find him a very loose um prospect in his hips Uh, he looks kind of tight when he wants to redirect to me anyway um i don't think he's going to make a ton of people miss in space i I think he is going to use his power more i don't see the guy with the lateral ability and the footwork to put successive cuts in place to, to, to dance around defensive backs uh god with the film i've watched i i agree with you too you know i went back to the 2020 film that got everybody falling in love with him and me too there's a lot more loose hips in that like oily hips for him to sink down and make a cut i don't see that he actually runs a little bit too upright for my liking and i just don't see the shift the shifting of his weight to really drop sink and cut it's more of a upright elusive Mm -hmm. like I don't know, quick footwork type of thing that I don't think is going to get him much in the NFL. And I'm not sure if that's just bad habits he's taken on, but it's not what I saw from 2020. And that if this is who he is now, it's going to be a problem. Yeah. I have in here in my notes that that's, this is my biggest concern for him in the NFL. Cause I think there'd be a, a consistent fantasy producer. You need explosiveness. You need lateral ability. And I'm not mm-hmm. sure that's going to be his game. All right. His burst in long speed. I think he has here again in my notes. Um, I think he's got decent acceleration, uh, straight line speed, but he doesn't have that, uh, that elite burst um, to be a big play threat in the NFL. Um, and he's not a pure burner and I don't think he's going to win any foot races down the field. I mean, I, I saw a tweet out today. Somebody said he ran 21 miles an hour, but it seems like every time everyone puts out a tweet about how fast people run, it's between 20 and 22 miles an hour. So I don't know if he's, <laughs> you know, like that much faster than everybody else, but I saw him tackled a couple times. He didn't break away when he had the the leg up in the second level. I didn't see him. You know, I, I saw a lot of people catching up to him and taking angles. They were in pursuit of him. Yeah, this might be like a Brees Hall effect type thing because I thought I saw the same thing for Brees Hall, and then he runs a pretty decent forty time. So I'm not really too sure what to make of this, but I watched him get caught too. Um, I saw the initial burst in his first two years. I don't see that instant burst this year at all. So I'm not sure what's going on. It, it, I feel like maybe there's an injury that is lingering, or maybe mentally he's messed up from being injured. But I just don't see it either. Yeah. Okay. So strength and contact balance. I think that's what a lot of people in the NFL draft circles are going to hang their hat on. Um, you know, look, he's, he's got that workhorse profile at six foot, 213 pounds. He's a hard nosed downhill runner. Mm -hmm. Um, he plants with force. Um, he's not afraid of contact. uh, In fact, I think he likes to give the contact and that's part of my problem is the fact that I'd like to see him not like give the contact and try and get away from the contact instead of initiating it. Um, but at the same time, I didn't find him to have this elite contact balance. What did you think about his contact balance? You know, I thought it was off and on. It was a bit spotty, and I think it had to do with who he was competing against. But everything you just said, I completely agree with you. I mean, he's a highly competitive guy, uh, refuses to go down, makes the most out of the yards he can get, mm-hmm. fights yeah. through contact. I mean, right. that's that's who he is. And I think to what you said about him, I'm not sure if he can create for himself, which is why he's taking on the contact, because I just don't see the high speed change of direction from him either. Yeah, I don't either. So let's talk about his pass catching. All right. Now he caught 30 balls this year. So 
you know, he was used, uh, you know, so from a PPR standpoint in fantasy, if he gets the good, you know, draft capital, which we're going to talk about here in a minute, if he gets the good landing spot that we're going to talk about here in a minute, um, you know, I don't think he's going to be a guy that is going to be a necessarily a weapon, you know, downfield, um, you know, given his skill set in the passing game, but I think he's going to be definitely serviceable. I don't think there's anything really, um, you know, to worry about as far as that, you know, 30 catches for a running back in college is pretty solid. So, um, yeah. Anyway, so let's go back to that Alabama game. We talked about um, the outside zone stretch plays that I feel mm-hmm. that just is not his game. I mean, I feel he's more of a, you know, get north and south, you know, find your gap, find the inside zone and do that. But did you notice that Alabama game, too, that he was in Wildcat like three times? Yeah, I noticed that, too. They were trying to get as creative as they possibly could. Um, and I, I like that they did that with yeah, him. Yeah, I, I think, did too. You mm-hmm. know, I think that's a, just another dynamic part of his game that, you know, you, you'd be able to utilize at the NFL level. Yeah, so, um, all right, I got some stats here. I threw one on the show sheet that I want to go and kind of put out there to everybody. All right. In Alabama, these were his yards per carry for this three years. In 2020, 3.5, 2021, 2.2, and this year, 4.2. So again, and I'm looking at Alabama as one of the obviously better SEC schools. You're going up against the good competition. Yes, his offensive line might not be great. I understand. But Georgia's numbers, 2020, 3.9, 2021, 2.8, 2022, 1.9. You got, cons- you know, you know, so there's six games against in three years against the two arguably top defenses, you know, better mm-hmm. teams just didn't have those explosive games all his carries were you know no explosive plays in there so again just kind of throwing it out there i just you know again the the lack of explosive plays i think is what you know yeah he's had one or two here there but they're just not consistent enough for me yeah i would agree with that i I just think he's you know a power runner that Mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily have the size to sustain the kind of impact that he's been taking over the last couple years yeah so let's talk about his draft capital um, I'm thinking round three through five. I don't think he's a, I don't think he's a round two guy. I think no, he, I, I think he's maybe late round three, but I don't think he's going to get past round five. He isn't, you know, an sec running back. I think that's going to bump his stock up a little bit just because of the competition, his physicality, his size, he's got all that going for him. You know, where do you see him, you know, in the yeah. draft? I got round three, four. So I'm I'm okay. right in the same area. We're, we're right there. All right, rookie yeah. draft. I have round two. I don't think even with a juicy landing spot, unless he gets early day, you know, round two draft capital. I think he's a lock for the second round. What, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I got mid second. I think that's the sweet spot for him. Maybe a little bit higher if he lands in a spot where he gets immediate production. And remember, I think you took him in round two in our rookie mock draft, I did. right? Yeah, yeah so. he went to the Giants, which wasn't even that That's great right. of a landing spot, but I I like the idea of him behind Saquon Barkley just to see what happens. All right, cool. So on this channel, there's a great rookie mock out there if you guys want to yeah, check it out. Um, yeah, so uh, his fantasy value ceiling, um, kind of like to throw out there and talk about here as part of these shows as well. I mean, I got an RB2. Uh, RB3 range, um, probably more of an RB3 right now, depending on obviously a lot to shake out draft capital landing spot. Do, do you see him similar to that? Yeah, on the show sheet, I wrote same. That's exactly what I see. Okay, so some landing spots that I thought might be good in the third or fourth round. These teams actually have the draft capital in these rounds Carolina, Buffalo, Atlanta, Tennessee. Again, these are teams that I think, you know, I could see maybe Tennessee taking a shot with him. Um, you know, because he's he he is that straight line. I mean, I think that's really successful anyway. We didn't really see that in the Alabama game, but you know, the the straight ahead, you know, big, you know, bigger physical, you know, runner. Um, I think yeah. I could see them maybe drafting him with you know Derrick Henry being twenty seven or twenty eight right now. You know, yeah. The only the only reason I wouldn't want to see that because I'm a Hassan Haskins fan, and I just want to see him get a little bit of our opportunity there. Yeah, uh, um, but I like it. I think Atlanta. I think I think Atlanta runs a lot of zone. Which mm-hmm. is what he did at Auburn. Okay. That All might right. be a good fit for him. I Great. can see that. And the production, immediate production could be there. All right, cool. So his uh for me, his fantasy player comp. Um, I saw him as a smaller kind of Brian Robinson, right? Brian Robinson is bigger, more physical. Um, but Brian Robinson also had doesn't have those traits of a uh, you know, elusiveness and the ability to put multiple steps together to make guys miss. He's more of a physical kind of banger and that's kind of what i see tank bigsby being i don't see him being this elusive guy who is making these jaw dropping you know 
jukes and you know elusiveness out in the field. Yeah, I think uh, I think he can stem together some moves, but not not consistently. And I don't think it's going to be as as good in the NFL. But I have Tony Pollard. I could see a, a path like Tony Pollard's very similar size. I think the skill set when Tony Pollard first came in the NFL is very similar to what we see from Tank Bigsby and the development upside. I could see Tony Pollard. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, he might have that kind of role like he right. has with the yeah. Cowboys. More of a, you know, everyone's ready to turn the turn the keys over to Tony Pollard down there in Dallas. So, um, all right, well, that's the show, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, we've done a lot of these shows for these rookies coming out next year. Jalen Hyatt, we've done. Um, who else have we done, Jason? We've done a bunch of these guys. We've done. Oh my uh, gosh, Charbonnet. We've done. Why am I drawing a blank? We've done. Yeah, so me too. So yeah, we've done. <laughs> you know, Ray Rice, my guy. Yeah. Um, who, by the way, is kind of getting round late round one buzz. By the way, she's uh, getting some this buzz. Is, uh, she's yes, getting is. some buzz. We did Corum. We did Jordan Addison. So. Yep. So check out the show, guys. Subscribe. I appreciate it. Leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Let us know um, if you see what we see. Again, uh, right now I'm going to put two films. Um, I'm going to put the Alabama game on, and I think uh, I don't know what the other one is, but it will be there for you guys to take a look at. So again, guys, thanks for watching.